We are diving into the best of the best of our militaries. This is going to be a military training comparison between the British SAS soldiers and the United States Navy SEALs. Both very specialized, both top of their game in the military. And I have heard throughout my whole life some crazy, wild, outlandish, but true stories about both of these, the British SAS and the Navy SEALs. Incredible what they do, incredible what they go through to become SAS or a SEAL. But let's see a comparison. This is a couple years old now. This is by the Infographic Show, so we'll see how detailed it is. And let's just sit back and enjoy. Let's see if our bodies could have done this. Could you have done this back in the day? The British Army Special Air Force, AKA. Oh, and that was a top comment right there that they actually made. They're doing multiple videos at once and they meant Special Air Service, SAS, not Special Air Force. So they corrected that, thank goodness. SAS began operations in 1941 during the Second World War. The right. reason for having such a specialized set of soldiers was to get behind enemy lines and attack them from within, or at least yes. destroy what they could while gaining intelligence. It still takes part in operations that involve the United Kingdom, but as it's very much a covert special forces unit, much of what the SAS does is a secret. The Navy SEALs, Sea, Air, and Land Team, was formed much later when President John F. Kennedy established them in 1962 as a clandestine unit which, like the SAS, would take on special missions much of the time in very hostile environments. All they right. also act under a veil of secrecy and are sometimes referred to as America's secret warriors. If both these units are so secretive, then how does one get a job with them? Well, with the SAS, there is a small problem to begin with if you are a mere civilian. They won't allow you to apply. So to start with, you must already be in the British Armed Forces or be a soldier in the British Commonwealth. Another way okay. to get in is to join the SAS Reserves, and they do accept civilians. As long as you've passed the reserve training and worked with them at least 18 months, you can apply to work in the SAS proper. To apply for the SAS, you should be between 18 and 32 years of age and be in amazing physical and mental shape. You'll be I could still make it. I could still do it, although I'm not a British uh, citizen or in the Commonwealth. But um, once upon a time... Be required to do at least a three-year stretch. Women can apply, but have so far been excluded from most combat movements. To apply, you must accept that you know the harsh demands expected of you, people have died during training, and that means signing an Army General Administrative Instruction Form. You're basically acknowledging you are willing to go through hell. Next mm -hmm. comes the medical, the battle fitness test, which will mean running fully kitted or squatted for one and a half miles in 15 minutes. Oh. Apparently 10% of applicants don't even make it past this point. That pace for even an average person in running shoes and shorts isn't too bad. Now you start your real training. To the mile and a half, not that bad, especially when you're that age. But add on how much weight fully kitted. I've heard U.S. soldiers having somewhere up to 60 pounds, maybe more, maybe a little bit less on them at the same time. That would be, yeah, you definitely have to train for that one. Even though it's just a mile and a half, that would, that would suck. To join the Navy SEALs, you need to be a natural born or naturalized American between the ages of 18 and 28, although at 17 you can join if your parents say it's okay. If you want to become an officer, cool. you can be up to the age of 33. The first woman ever started the training in 2017, but dropped out soon after. You'll need to have a clean record, and many background checks will be done. You'll then undergo physical and mental tests, including an eye test to make sure you have under 27 division. As for what shape you must be in, well, you are going to go through hell with the SEALs, so they suggest you follow their Navy Special Warfare Physical Training Guide. This includes lots of long and short swims and runs, lots of interval training, as well as other workouts. As for other strength training, their gym workouts basically tell you you'll have to be as strong as a bull as well as have all the cardio attributes. You'll be screened before you can start training, and that will mean you must show that you can run one and a half miles in 11 minutes but not squatted. This also comes after a 500 yard swim in 12 and a half minutes, 42 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, and six pull-ups, all, right. all with a short rest in between. Okay. Once you actually start training with the SAS, the first phase lasts four weeks. This will test your endurance and ability to navigate through the wilderness, that being a harsh mountain range in Wales. In 2015, a young recruit died during this exercise just half a kilometer from the end. He died oh. at the part nicknamed VW Valley, standing for Voluntary Withdrawal Valley. Two other soldiers died that day too, leading to an inquest into the treatment of soldiers oh my god that's crazy i i didn't even know that wales had such dangerous mountains i'm assuming during the winter time and it was just really really not good conditions there but that's that's something uh, i've never been to wales so it's something uh, new that i learned some of the activities in the mountains included a 15 mile hike to start with those that can get through that 
then have to do a 40 mile hike carrying a 55 pound backpack, oh, a rifle, man. plus their food and water. They are not allowed to use any established trails, but they do have a map and a compass. After that, they can rest Ooh. a bit and start the weapons training phase, as well as do parachute training. After that, there is six weeks of jungle training, usually in the rainforests of Belize, Borneo, or Brunei. Awesome. The last phase is called escape and evasion, which will mean being forced into some horrible survival scenarios, as yeah. well as learning how to handle being interrogated. This will include humiliations and other psychological harassment, as well as being blindfolded, deprived Ooh. of sleep, given nothing to eat or drink, being put in stress positions, imprisoned in a small cage, and having to listen to loud noises all the time. SAS tough guy turned novelist said physical injuries finish a lot of people off during training, but you need a lot of strength of will to get through the psychological stuff. In 2016, the Washington Times reported that one Navy SEAL died in three out of the last four training classes. One was a drowning, another a suicide, and another a car crash after drinking heavily. The post states that the six month training will include a seven day stretch of little sleep, self-induced hypothermia, and brutal physical conditioning known as Hell Week. It's Hell Week where most recruits drop out. The training in Colorado starts with five weeks of pre-training in class. Get through that and you enter the realm of pain and indignity. The Navy SEALs website doesn't go into specifics, but states that you'll be tested to your limits of fatigue. This will include running through sand, swimming in oceans, sometimes in the middle of the night with your clothes on, rappelling down cliffs or buildings at speed, enduring cold and heat, getting lost and finding ways out, combat training, long distance underwater dives, weapons and explosives training, mission planning, tactics training, and more. Hell Week seems to be the worst part. One soldier described it as being designed to put you through 24-7 days of no rest and continual harassment. I've seen clips of this and videos about how they go through SAS training. And the things they do there that I've seen that they actually show, you, you definitely need to be a certain type of person to get through it. And I'm sure I haven't watched much of SAS, of, of how their training is at least as in depth as the SEALs, but I can only imagine it's just as bad or worse, maybe in a little bit different ways, some similar ways. Yeah, you have to be an ox physically and, and truly mentally because the mental game is so powerful. Already, I'm, I'm just shivering thinking of these things, either way up in the mountains or just swimming and pretty much drowning yourself, getting hypothermia, potentially dying in either of these. Yeah, it's, it's no joke. I had two friends that wanted to become SEALs. Uh, yeah, ne neither did, of course. Probably the same for uh, someone that wanted to become an SAS soldier. From his class of 300, only 19 completed the training. In all, Ooh. it will last five and a half days and you'll almost continuously be pushed to your limits. You are allowed no more than about four hours sleep during the entire training. You'll also have to deal with integration in what's mm. called the survival, evasion, resistance, and escape phase. Former no. SEAL Brandon Webb said it will involve sacks over your head, being beaten with sticks, and humiliation. It's here he said that some people lose their minds. Great. At least after that, you get some classroom time. For seven weeks, you'll also have a land warfare phase as well as parachute training. If you pass it all, you'll be given the Navy SEAL Trident but then have to do advanced training. This will include sniper, communications, and free fall parachute training. Once you are done, you'll have way more weapons to use than a regular soldier. In the SAS, this will include a C8 carbine assault rifle, an ultra compact individual weapon, an M16, an HK MP5 submachine gun, an HK417 sniper rifle, an AW50 anti-material rifle, handguns, wow. tear gas, canister launchers, stun grenades, rocket launchers, portable anti-personnel mines, grenade launchers, surface-to-air missiles, and many more things it will take too much time to talk Ooh, about. You'll also, crazy. of course, get all the kit, including things like body armor. According to yeah. the Navy SEALs website, your regular SEAL on land will carry such things as the Colt Automatic Rifle 15, the M60 machine gun, M203 grenade launchers, a shotgun, an SASR 50 caliber sniper rifle, an M107 anti-material rifle, a Beretta M9 handgun, a 20 millimeter Gatling gun, and AT4 rockets. Again, these are just some of the most used weapons as the list is endless. So, who do you think has the best training? Do you think you could get through it? Let us know in the comments. No, yeah, um, no. But that was a good uh, question for you. Could you honestly get through it? Probably the mental game would probably get to most people. I mean, the physical game, I'm not a big guy anyways, so that would be rough. But have you ever known anyone in either the SEALs or SAS? And have they said anything about it, any stories? Because I've seen a lot of, just like the Navy SEALs, a lot of SAS raids and situations with hostages around the world. Hats off really to all of these specialized units 
But any stories about the SAS would be great, or if you've known someone to do it, or some of their training, because this was a very basic video. And of course, if you could get through the uh, either of these trainings, it's, it's crazy to me. But until that time, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Maybe I could find some about the SAS raid somewhere around the world. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you then. Have a good rest of your day. Good training. Or not. I'm not. Too intense.